Hey, um, all right, I'm Russ. This is a short rough and ready guide to creating a little Decentraland LAN parcel uh, on a Mac. We're gonna we're gonna go from scratch, and oh, we're just gonna I'm just gonna briefly explain uh, the Decentraland A minus format, how to install the Decentraland uh, CLI tool, um, and basically how to get going. So uh, hopefully this works. Uh, the CLI tool is available from cli.decentraland.org. Um, you need Node.js and npm installed. Um, I'm on a Mac. I've already got it installed. Um, there's this brilliant tool called the Node Version Manager. It's a simple bash script. If you're on Windows, I can't help you. This works on Mac and Linux. Um, I recommend Mac for everything. Uh, it can simply be installed through this one line, and then that lets you install and manage multiple different node versions, node version manager, um, NVM. Really recommend it, NVM. So, uh, sorry if my font is a bit small, but, um, I do MVM LS. So these are all the different versions I have installed, and I'm currently using uh, 8.91. Um, there doesn't seem to be a recommended version on their page. Anyway, so get Node installed. Um, whatever operating system you're on, there will be tools and websites that help you. If you're stuck installing Node, work it out. Um, now, to install the Decentraland CLI tools, you just do npm install dash g Decentraland. Okay, I'm going to just cut out the next five minutes, but in order to get the Decentraland npm CLI installed, I have to run npm install hyphen g Decentraland twice. The first time it crashed with an error saying something was missing. Uh, and then I just ran it again and it worked fine. So uh, try, if you have a problem installing it for whatever reason, try try just immediately installing it again and hopefully it just works. Okay, well, this looks like second time round is the charm. So, Awesome. If, if it doesn't work for you, uh, just just run it again. Um, at least at least it's installed now. Uh, so we've got the command line tool installed. I'm gonna make it make a new folder for your work. So I'm gonna make the Rust demo and CD into the Rust demo. Here. Now, as per the instructions on the website. You want to run DCL in it. This will now kick off the command line or CLI tool that we just made uh, and get things going. So there are some defaults. Scene title, I'm going to put Russ underscore demo. Um, my Ethereum address is, uh, I'm not actually sure, use to check ownership of passwords when deploying your scene. I'm not actually sure why they're doing this because when you deploy the scene, you should be signing off on it using your Ethereum wallet and it should get your Ethereum address from there. I highly doubt, that it, anyway, it doesn't matter for this demo. So I'm just gonna put some random shit in there. Lucky triple eight, uh, hi China. Um, my name, Russ. Your email. If someone can get me, rust.com, I'll be your friend forever. Okay, so um, the next stage, you have to enter all of the x, y coordinates for the land you're going to create an area for. So, as this is a demo, I'm going to do something I haven't really done before. 
I've always used just one parcel of land in my test. So I'm gonna I'm gonna screw myself up by doing one comma one and then a little semicolon. Then one comma two, another little semicolon. And I'm gonna also do two comma one and two comma two. This way we should be able to see what a, a two by two area of land stretching from one one to two two looks like. Um, but obviously put in your coordinates. Do you want to continue? Damn yeah I do. Uh, which type of project would you like to generate? This is interesting. Ooh, okay, this is all new. Um, I'm gonna go with a static A minus scene project because I haven't dicked around with the other stuff in the slightest. Don't even know what they are. Um, and woohoo, here we go. Uh, this is it, so. Ah, man, they have changed all of it. Holy fuck holes. Uh, sweet. There's some documentation. Badass. Um, do I? Okay, this is great. How to use the CLI? This is amazing. So I'm going to open up Atom in this directory. And. I'm also going to run DCL start. So this this tool is actually cool. Um, so this is a preview. So this is what we've got. So you can see, we can walk around it. It's a two by two area. I may have already put some stuff in the middle. So you can walk through it. They've got a plane, a square, a sphere, and some kind of circular tube. Um, press escape to click out. So this is my Simon Atom editor. And we've got a model directory, an audio directory. With the central land stuff is we've got the central land. We've got a scene.json file. So if you look, this is all the stuff that we've just added. So that's the title, the owner address, my name, my email, the parcels that we're specifying. Um, and it's got some other stuff like it's communicating via WebRTC. Um, Using the central lands render view server, uh, you can add some tags so you can whether you can fly or not. I don't know if this is just for editing. Someone earlier said it might just be for editing. Um, I'm hoping it's also for production, so you can let people fly around your area or not. Um, whether you're going to enable voice chat. Uh, apparently, the blacklist lets you. So when you're standing in this parcel, you can then blacklist other parcels around you to stop them from interfering. So if your neighbor has like a massive dildo on, on their parcel, ruining your pre view, you can then blacklist their parcel. Or more likely if they have like some really complex scene with loads of animations and polygons that's uh, chewing up visitors to your parcel CPU cycles, and you can prevent that from loading to provide better experience. Um, teleport position. I believe this is the X, Y, and Z um, of where someone in your parcel turns up. I don't know how granular it is, uh, but you know, if someone teleports to your parcel, this would be their, their start position. And because we've got a multi sim you know, we've got lots of, uh, we've got four, four different parcels here. So if anyone teleports this group, this will be where that's expressed. And then the JSON also defines the scene.xml that is, we're going to be using. So the scene XML, this is A minus. And you can see it's, it's literally just XML. We've cleaned it up a bit since I last looked at it. Um, so they do document A minus on their website. 
this is the tool. Um, so this scene, this is just about the uh, So somewhere on their wiki, this is searchable. Minus documentation. Right, okay, so on the wiki.decentraland there uh, is almost this documentation part of minus. Pretty simple. So all I'm going to try and do, emphasis on try, is I'm going to try and put a Lambo in the middle of this scene. I think that's a perfect metaphor for half the people that bought land. Um, everyone wants a Lambo. So. So, this is, this is our directory, they've nicely put directories together, models, textures and audio. Um, I'm going to open up the models directory, we're going to have a, a classic, here's one I prepared earlier. So I've got these two Lamborghini models. I've copied these Lamborghini models into my model directory. Okay. So I'm going to try and work with this event model first. So the central land last time I checked supports two model files. Um, GLTF, which is really easy and is actually what I ended up using about two weeks ago because uh, it just worked. And the lightweight object material uh, format, which two weeks ago wasn't working, but I'm hoping it works now. So this should be really easy to. We're going to go back to A minus. You can see they've got some really nice dots. Um, so this is how we render an object model for our HTTP URL. So we go to our scene. We put in the A frame. Now you can see the model directory here. Object model equals, and we specify object models. We change the name to event the object. And material models and change the name to event.material and save it by hitting Control S. Now, last time, uh, wait, hold on. Um, okay, so we're missing some stuff. Every every element requires position, rotation, and, and models also work with scale. So I'm going to put this in position equals zero, 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 center of the world. Rotation, no rotation, and scale, default scale, one, one, one. So let's try and do. Okay, before it used to auto load. Ah, 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 I think I know the problem. I'm just going to stop it, computer. 
try it. Okay, this is fucking awesome. Let's just refresh this. Okay. It's not there. Let's break out of the terminal. Stop it. Start it. Aha, here we go. Lamborghini! Woohoo! Um, right, so you might have to click refresh. Now, from a performance point of view, my computer is struggling. Um, but this will help you build your scene. Um, okay, so it looks like I didn't actually need to restart the DCL client. Now I have two things left. So yeah, so that's that's basically how how you put an object in the world. Um, really easy. So they've got boxes, spheres, and cylinders and planes in the demo. But being realistic, no one's ever gonna do that. People are gonna make their models in 3D Studio. I'm not sure Blender is actually a good thing to make a model thing. It's, it's an animation tool, I think. Um, or, or at least I'm not. Uh, so yeah, so this, this is how you make uh, an A-frame scene, really. So it's really easy. It's literally three lines of XML in a text file. So the, the barrier to entry, really, is getting node installed. Um, go to nodejs.org. You can install shit here. Really easy. Um, Mac OS is, you know, I, I said MVM. I recommend it. Uh, I do a lot of development, but you know, whatever floats your boat. Okay. So yeah, um, drive drive along. In, in your fast car, um, look at that, look at that reflection from the sun, there's the sun, you can see that the sun is kind of shining on the car in a cool way, add some stuff, a little bit, mm -hmm. but in a way this is so slow, mm -hmm. but yeah, there we go, um, Cool. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.